In this video, I will show you how to properly handle exceptions in C++ threads, and what happens when a thread throws, and where and how we can catch it. In particular, I will discuss how we can transfer the exception from one thread's call stack all the way to another thread's call stack. We will use constructs such as std promise and future, and something called exception pointer. Also, I will talk about a more advanced case where you have multiple threads, and each of them can throw, and we want to transfer the exception from their call stack all the way to the main call stack. I will show you how we can do this with a shared message queue. And finally, I will discuss how we can use RAII in C++ to write safer multi-threaded programs. One main question in C++ threads is that what happens when a thread throws and who is going to catch this exception? And that brings me to this poem, which goes as follows. The lonely thread throws, but no one catches. You opted for try, but it died in silence. How it ended, you ask? Only one fate. Your old foe, STD terminate. Let's review the basics of exceptions in C++. When you have a piece of code that is performing some risky operation, you put that in a try-catch block. If an error happens, you throw an exception with, to signal an error happened. You can catch that exception in the catch block and also specify which exception you are catching. And finally, you can handle that exception in the catch block. In C++, exceptions propagate through call stack. In this example, I have a main function that calls a function called level 1. Level 1 is calling level 2. Level 2 is calling level 3. And level 3 is throwing an exception. Once level 3 throws an exception, we can either catch it at level 2. So I can put level 3 call inside the try catch block and catch the exception right here. Alternatively, I can catch the exception at level 1. I can, I can let the exception pass through level 2. And finally, I can let the exception even pass level 1 and catch it in the main function. The fact that they propagate is a great thing about exceptions, and that's why we like them. Once an exception happens, a process is performed called stack unwinding. Stack unwinding means stack frames are unwound in reverse order, which means the control exits from each of these functions one by one until a catch block is found. Every time that we exit from each of these functions, no matter where you are, the destructor of all the local variables is called. Now, as we unwind this stack, if no catch block is found, std terminate will be called and your program will be terminated. This is not desirable. You usually want to terminate your program in a predicted way and on your terms rather than being terminated without your control. So we talked about stack unwinding, but what happens in thread exceptions? Do we have stack unwinding in threads as well or not? Consider this example. In main, I call a function. This is not a thread. This is a normal function. So I call this function foo. Once I call this, foo will be in the same call stack as main. Once foo is done, I create a thread and then wait for this thread to join. As I do this, this thread will not be in the same call stack as the main function because it's a thread and it's running in parallel with the main function. So a new call stack will be created and this worker thread would be in this call stack. So normal functions will, will run on the main threads stack and threads will have their own separate stack. What does this mean when it comes to catching exceptions? One thing to know is that exceptions do not propagate across threads. So if this is my main call stack and this is my worker call stack, if the worker calls a bunch of other functions and one of these throws, the exception only propagates inside this call stack and it won't be propagated inside this call stack. So although main launch this thread, it will not be notified if an exception happens in any of these functions. So this means each thread or a function in its call stack must catch the exception. Otherwise, you guessed it right, std terminate will happen and your program will get terminated. Here's an example in which we create a lambda function to create a thread. Notice that if this thread throws, the exception will not propagate to the main function. You cannot use a catch block here or anywhere else inside main to catch the exception that, the, that, that this thread is throwing. And yes, you guessed it right, this program will get terminated by to terminate. So how can we fix this? This is an attempt to fix that program. We simply catch the exception that this thread throws inside this thread itself and handle it right here. 
This will work. There will be no stood terminate anymore. However, how do we know in the main function if t true or not? Sometimes you actually do care to know if your thread throws or not. Once t joins, sometimes it might be desirable to know if t terminated correctly or there was an exception. In this way, there's no way to know this and main cannot know if t executed correctly or not. If only we could transfer this exception all the way to the launcher thread, in this case, the main function. There are various ways to do this, to transfer an exception from a thread to its launcher. One way, which is a very clean and nice way, is to use std promise and future. Let's quickly review their functionality and then we will talk about how we can use it for exceptions. Let's say you have a worker thread that wants to send a message to your main thread. You can have a promise and call set value on this promise and send the value to the main thread. The main thread is calling .get on the corresponding future to this promise. This promise has a corresponding future. Well, once we call set value, this message is being sent through this channel between the promise and the future. And once the main thread calls .get, it gets blocked until this message is sent. In short, promise and its corresponding future act as a one-shot channel. One thread can send a message from the promise to the future only once and the receiver gets blocked until this message arrives. There is a, so this will cause a synchronization between the two threads. Promise provides one more function which is called set exception if this thread wants to transfer an exception to our main thread, rather than calling set value and send the value that it wants to send, it can set an exception instead. So in the normal operation, it sends the value by set value, but once an error happens, it sends the exception through the same channel and it will be received by get function, which it, remember that the main function is blocked until either this message or this message arrives. If the exception arrives here, however, the get function actually throws and you can catch the exception inside the catch block. So this way, we were able to transfer this exception and catch it in the main thread. Here is a more complete example. We define a promise and a future corresponding to that promise using get future. And we create a thread that captures the promise. Normally, this thread wants to send a value to the launcher thread. However, if an exception happens, it throws and inside the catch block, we can send the exception using set exception and we can get what exception happened using current exception. This will send the exception to the main thread. Remember that the main thread gets blocked until either set value or set exception is called on the promise. If exception happens, if set exception was called, the get function throws, we can catch the exception and handle it right here. So an exception happened in the thread outside of the call stack of main. However, using a promise and future, we successfully transferred the exception and we were able to catch it inside the main thread as if it happened in the main thread's call stack. Here's another example in which rather than using a lambda function, I use a standalone function and I pass my promise to that function using std move. Depending on the value of this parameter, the worker function may or may not throw an exception. If it doesn't throw an exception and it works normally, it sends a value on the promise, which I can receive using the future. Remember that the main function is blocked on this future until its value arrives. So once it arrives, it, uh, it can print it and there will be no exception. However, if the worker throws, we catch it in the catch block and we use current exception to get the exception value and we send it using set exception set exception transfers this exception, which is really this one, to the main thread and will cause get to throw. Once get throws, we can either catch it in this block or you also have the option of propagating it up this function. So let's say main was called by another function. If you don't catch the exception that get can throw in the main function, you can actually let it propagate and handle it in the function that is calling this one. So this is how we successfully transfer this exception from the call stack of the worker all the way to the, to the call stack of our main function. Up next, std exception pointer. As the name suggests, this acts like a pointer to an exception. Here's an example that uses an exception pointer. The main function instantiates the exception pointer and, and passes a reference to it to my worker thread. If the worker thread throws, we catch the exception and we assign that exception to the exception pointer. And then we let the worker thread finish. And once it is joined, 
Notice that now, if an exception happens, this should have a value. If this has a value, we can either handle the exception here using, using a try catch block, or we could just rethrow that exception. Notice that I'm passing exception pointer to, to rethrow exception um, to even further propagate this up the call stack. So again, suppose main was called by some other function. If you don't catch the exception that you rethrow here in the main function, you have the option to propagate this uh, up the stack. So again, we were able to transfer the exception that happens in the worker thread all the way to the call stack of the launcher thread. This allows for a more decoupled control over the exception transfer. Up next, a more advanced usage where you have multiple threads throwing an exception and you want to catch them all in the launcher thread. In this case, we use a message queue. Suppose the main thread launches multiple threads and these workers, each of them can throw an exception. Since there's multiple of them, we can put these exceptions inside a queue, which has elements of type std exception pointer. And notice that this is a shared queue because multiple threads are writing in it and this thread is reading from it. And then the main function can monitor this queue and handle the exceptions whenever it wants. Here's a simple implementation of this queue. Notice that this is not the most efficient one, but it's enough for our purposes. This just uses the standard libraries, the standard libraries queue with, the with element types of exception pointer. And we also have a mutex so that we can lock and create a critical section so that at each time, only one thread is manipulating the queue. If you want to know more about mutexes and conditional variables, make sure to watch my video on mutexes in C++ threads. The push function in this channel just simply creates a critical section to, to, to guarantee that the access is mutually exclusive. And then it pushes the exception of type exception pointer inside this queue. The pop function again locks on the mutex. And if the queue is not empty, pops the value and returns it. As these threads throw an exception, they call the push function. They put their exceptions inside this queue. And the main function can call the pop function and handle these exceptions. Here is an example that shows how to use our exception queue. I create, I create an exception channel inside the main function and I pass a reference to it to all of my threads. So a reference to this channel is passed to my worker threads. Here I create multiple threads and I push them inside a vector. Notice that I'm using J thread so that I don't have to call join function, join function explicitly. In the worker thread, depending on the value of the thread ID, I may or may not throw an exception. Once the thread does throw an exception, we catch it in the catch block and we simply call the push on this channel to push that exception inside the queue so that the main function can read it and handle it later. Once all of these threads join, some of them have pushed an exception inside this channel and the main function can now pop them one by one and handle them. Once it pops an exception, it can call rethrow an exception, which you can handle either in the main function in the catch block, or again, if the main function was called by some other function, we can even propagate the exception outside of this main function in the same call stack. So again, notice that how we were able to transfer the exception that happens in each of these threads, where each of them has a separate call stack all the way to the call stack of the main function. Up next, let's discuss how our AII in C++ can help us write safer code. Remember that RAII in C++ stands for Resource Acquisition is Initialization. It's a great feature of C++ where resources are tied to object lifetime. As an object is created inside the constructor body, a resource is acquired. During the lifetime of the object, you can use that resource, but as soon as the resource goes out of scope, that resource is automatically released by the destructor. There are various examples in C++, for example, suit lock guard, which is for locking on mutexes follows this pattern or unique pointer or smart pointers like unique pointer or shared pointer also follow this pattern. Once they go out of scope, the memory that was allocated by them will have a chance to be freed. It's a very good idea to use RAII when you're writing threads. For example, when you want to create a critical section, either use lock guard or unique guard so that after when you lock, an exception happens, you automatically unlock and then exit so that other threads will have a chance to get in the critical section. Using jthread is another example of how RAII can help. In this example, I'm using std thread, the vanilla std thread, and I have to call join or detach explicitly, explicitly before the thread goes out of scope. If I forget to do this, std terminate will terminate my program for me. A better way is to use std jthread, which provides RAII. That means if an exception happens and you don't get a chance to call join, it automatically it automatically calls join in its destructor and you don't have to be worried about to terminate terminating your program. 
So Jtlet has some minor overhead, but in many cases, it is worth to use this. It is worth to use it for the safety that it provides. Here's a summary of some best practices. Always catch the exception inside threads or a function in their call stack. If you want to transfer the exception to the launcher thread, use promise and future or exception pointer or arrow queues. Prefer jthread whenever the overhead, which is very tiny, is not important to you so, th so that you get exception and other safeties. And always try to use RAII to write safer code. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. If you found it useful, please do not forget to like it, comment, and send it to your friends. And also support me by subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot, and I see you in my next video.